how do you show 10 towel designs in less than 5 seconds in a promo video? Good morning guys, today is an extremely exciting day. I'm going to a photo shoot and that's my first photo shoot in Bali where the client came to me. Hey, I need to create a cinematic video, I like your work, do it for me. So now we packed everything, the shoot will be really cool. We shoot with two female models and one male model. I never work with a male model, it will be challenging now. I really don't know how to position male guys. Another fun fact, yesterday we forgot to pick up the washing and now we don't have clean clothes. That's why I'm like a walk-in advertising of Hugo Boss and Mary <laughs> doesn't have a single t-shirt so she is going with her sleeping stuff. Say hi. We're on Bali, that's fine. Oh. Every time we go somewhere with the bike and I have the huge gear back with me Mary wants to drive. I'm 70 kilograms with that bag. I'm plus 10 kilograms behind on the back of the bike. And the bike is not balanced at all. I feel like a bag of potatoes. And especially because she doesn't have enough power to handle the turns good. And oh, I'm behind. As always, we forgot something. I forgot my laptop with all the plants inside. <laughs> so now Mary has to go to take it. It's good that we are just five minutes away. I came first on the place. And uh, always, when you have a shoot, try to come at least half an hour earlier so you can check the place. Already know which angles to use. I'll show you now the view. I was knocked down, heard the countdown through the haze in the face of defeat. Yeah. I was ruled out with no bailout on my own, all alone, left to bleed out. We didn't have any time to vlog the experience. When you shoot paid project and you work in a big team, the money are burning fast because every member of the team is paid and if there is a delay, can be very, very expensive. The client hired all of us only for four hours, so we had to shoot around 20 small scenes. The big problem is if we don't record everything in those four hours, plus minus 15 minutes, the models will go away or you have to pay extra hours. To pull out such a shot, you have to plan it in advance. That was the first time I worked like that, so in this video I will share with you what went great and what went horribly wrong. The first thing, let me introduce you to the team I work with. Our three models, Diogo, Maria and Elena. But I rose up from the ground, just like I was and we had as well a photographer and stylist on the shoot. Now I will split the videos in 3-4 parts deliverables, preparation, the shoot itself and after that I'll show you the cinematic video and analyze it how I build it together. The first thing, let's check the client. I got contacted by a German startup who are just launching and need content for their website and social media. Their business model is very cool. They produce beach towels out of recycled bottles. The towels differ greatly from any other towel I've ever held. Here are the towels. It feels completely different than everything else. Uh, in the beginning I thought that it will feel like microfiber, but it's completely different. It is not different in a bad way, it's just different as different. The guys are not the first one on the market, so they have some competitors. Some of them had very nice visuals and already had some advertising videos, so we got inspiration from them. When you are a startup, the fastest way to grow fast is to copy the competitors, to see what they did good and to replicate it. I have been working for three startups and I'm speaking from experience. Don't discover the hot water. Better copy and move forward fast. When you are replicating someone else's works, you have to put spin and to add something from you. Modify it and add your vision. I will show you later a few cool things we created for the video and the client loved them. Now let's move to the preparation phase. The German guys were extremely cool to work with. They're young and motivated and did their homework great. They got some inspiration from the competitors and prepared an Excel sheet with all the shots they would like to get. Like a mood board. Plus they prioritized the most important shots. That helped me tremendously a lot to prepare before the shoot. Good job guys. Now my preparation didn't finish here. I spent one additional day where I made a list of each shot I want to take with each model. Then I planned all the shots we have to take in a combination. Boy and girl, girl and girl and all the models together. I used pages which is the same as Microsoft Word. Created a table with three columns for each model. The first column is empty. I use it as a marker. On the day of the shoot, at the moment we had the shot, we were marking it with a plus. 
Like that we could see very fast which shot we already took and what we have to film more. The second column is a description and the third one is a visual reference. That format was fantastic to keep me on track. The first thing I did was to check the place inside out. There are two reasons for that. The first, I want to know in advance where, what and how will be filmed. And the second, I have to make the video look rich. That means that the viewer shouldn't recognize that the video was shot on the same location. To achieve that, you have to play with the angles and with the focal lens. The telephoto lenses here are coming very handy. Second thing was to align with the photographer. How we gonna rotate the models so both of us can deliver the expected result. The list I prepared was very helpful because I didn't care with whom I'll start filming. When Josh took Diego in the beginning, I grabbed Maria and Elena to do the yoga. Go. Okay, perfect. The next big challenge we faced was positioning the models and aligning the movement. With Mary we had perfect synchron. She was giving signals to the models when to move and what to do. Slow down. One, two, two three. But when you're a single man show and you don't have a ton of experience, composing and posing will eat from you a lot of time, especially when you work with more than one model. Here my equipment betrayed me for the first time in history. My Ronin S stabilizer was introducing some weird shakes. After the last firmware update, the stabilizer started acting a little bit different. That really put me behind the schedule. I had to do again the motor strength balance test and that fixed 70% of the issue, but not fully. So after that at home, I spent an additional one hour recalibrating the gimbal and tweaking the settings. Now the thing which saved our asses and how we recognize that we have a problem. After each model work, we were backing up the footage on the computer and we were checking, is everything okay? On the small screen, I couldn't see the vibrations. Everything looked great. But when we checked it on the laptop, we saw the problem, so always have someone to check the footage. Next, we went on the rooftop to shoot Diogo. On the roof, I did several drone shots and that ate a lot of time. If you have to do drone shots, definitely calculate 20% more from the time you planned. It always takes time to set the drone, mount the filter, do the calibration and find how you're gonna fly it. Unfortunately, here I run in two big issues. The first one was the remote control. In midair something happened and when I was pressing the camera to go up or down the drone was flying left or right. I couldn't control the camera pitch at all. The second big issue was the drone range. I have Mavic Air and the range is horrible. Every time the drone loses direct visuals with the remote you are losing signal. If you plan to do client work don't buy Mavic Air. Now the coolest thing I did and the client really liked it was a 3 second shot. How do you show 10 towel designs in less than 5 seconds in a promo video? I recorded 10 videos of how the model is walking at the same place with a different towel. The editing is very simple, just match the leg movement. But in the given time frame, it's really good enough. We managed to record it for around 15 minutes and it ended up great. With such a trick shot, you have to be very careful on a paid shoot, not to kill too much time and trash the footage at the end, because there is always a chance that it will not work. We started filming at 8 am and 4 hours just flew away. That is why it's very important someone to keep track of time. The last 30 minutes were very stressful for me because one model wanted to leave and I knew that I have only 30 minutes to finish all shots we planned. In the end, I filmed only 70% of everything I wanted, but that was really good enough to create a cool cinematic video. Now it's very important to have some time to experiment and to do something out of the plan. I did two videos after the shoot and they end up being my favorite ones. First, Elena had a little bit more time and with her I just recorded one nice short clip, just running and smiling, it ended up great. Second, Diogo came with a motorbike and I just asked him if he would have some time to record a bit with the motorbike. We went on the street and captured a really cool video. By the way, let me know if you want me to show you how I recorded that video. Those two shots end up being my favorite ones. Now let me show you the final results and after that I will analyze my edit.
with the first five shots you have to grab the attention of the viewer and to let him know something is going to happen. The first one, girl watching up. It means, hey guys, continue watching what is going to happen. Second shot, cool guy on a motorbike. Hey guys, something cool is going to happen now. The third one is the step in the video. It's like, come on guys, come on a journey with me. The fourth one, again, stepping into the video. The fifth one is a slow push towards our characters in introducing the two female models into the picture. Everything that happening for around five seconds. When you're doing such type of advertising bureau, you don't have a lot of time. For a very short period of time, you have to show a lot. That's why here is coming the match shot. For around three to four seconds, I'm showing all towel designs. As a person who is building this cinematic video, my main goal is to bring the product in the fastest way possible to the viewer. At the same time, not to be boring. You need to build something interesting. You don't have much time for a slow cinematic video, how somebody is waking up, drinking coffee and 30 seconds of nothing. You have to bang it from the very beginning. And after I show all the towels, I want to bring very nice emotion, like a couple hugging each other using the towel. I want to have emotional build up in that clip. I want to show happiness. Now here the sand shot is very important because one of the main selling points of the towels is that they're sand free. No matter how much sand you throw on them, in the moment you pick them up, there is no sand. There is no a single drop of sand on the towel. And I tasted it and I really love those towels because of that. After that, again, are coming two close-up shots. With them, I really wanted to break the viewer's memory of what happened before that. So when I show the next clip, to be like a fresh star. Here with that shot, I wanted to show how small is the towel and how portable it is. It's again, really nice selling point. Girl running with the towel. I told you, it's my favorite shot. I really love it. Shows really cool emotions. It's very playful. A busy businessman here. That shot was really cool because it displays the logo. It uh, shows the brand. You can see somebody typing. I added a nice typing keyboard sound and then I'm just speed ramping to the logo, holding it for half a second and then moving to the next shot. I wanted the end of the video to be very playful, fun, um, with very nice emotions and at the same time to look really cool. Now, the animation at the end, I did it in After Effects. It took me maybe around 20-30 uh, minutes to do it, it wasn't so hard. So definitely learn a little bit of After Effects that will increase dramatically your production value. I cannot tell you how happy was the client when he saw the logo, that it's not static but it's nice and playful. The main trick I was using here with that video was to play with the close-up shots. The close-up shots were resetting the viewer's brain and like that I had an empty canvas and I could uh, display a similar shot on a similar place and it will not look boring because I end up with a lot of shots which are looking the same. So to build that video I was following very simple formula. I had a wide shot, after that was coming a close-up shot and after that I was using some shot from somewhere else. With the close shots I was resetting the viewer's brain not to remember what it was before because if I position two shots which are extremely similar to each other because they are shot on more or less the same place the video starts looking really really boring. So that's my secret for editing that b-roll. Thank you for joining me on that shoot. I hope it was interesting for you and you learned something new. And see you in the next episode. Don't forget to put like, subscribe and write me something in the comments.